morning. Good morning. To President Wilson, to the members of this distinguished platform, world-class faculty leadership, to faculty and staff, to the student body, the most especially to the men of the class of 2014. Welcome to Senior Day Crown Forum. Today, we're going to begin a celebratory journey that will end up on the Century Campus where you will be crowned a Morehouse man. That celebration starts today. In doing so, we are recognizing and honor the fine qualities of this class. We will lift high in the African tradition those members who have exceeded very well in their coursework, in their major fields of study. We will listen intently with our inner ear to the words the members of this class will share with us and they're giving back to their younger brothers. But in doing so, we will get a glimpse of the fine character that they have developed in the years that they've been here. And finally, we will give our hearts to the men of the class of 2014 for all that they have endured, all that they have gone through. They have committed to give back to their alma mater. We humbly respect and honor you today. So let the celebration begin. Please assume the posture of prayer. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, King of Kings, Son of Man, Jehovah, Provider and Protector, Lord, we thank you on today that you have given us breath, you have given us mind, and you have given us a heart. We thank you that you have given us emotions and thoughts and ideas and visions and plans and dreams. God, we thank you that you've given us strategies. God, we thank you that you've given us vision. God, we thank you that you've allowed us one more day to come into your presence and to celebrate the joy of moving forward. Lord, we ask, we ask on today that you would equip us for our journey. God, strengthen us. Give us a new piece of joy. Give us a new piece of love, laughter, and liberty. God, we pray now, God, that if there's anything in us, oh God, that says that we can't make it, if there's anything in us that says that mediocrity is okay, if there's anything in us that says that failure is acceptable, God, we rebuke that thing now. And we want to walk in success. God, we want to walk in victory. We want to walk in power and authority. Lord, we don't want to leave Morehouse the same way that we came. So God, endow us with a new power. Endow us with a new vision. And endow us, oh God, with the almighty power that you have given your son through the spirit of your son Christ. Lord, we pray now that you would endow us, oh God with your great authority to rule and reign over this earth. You've given us dominion. God, we thank you that you have allowed us to, to see these four years. God, we thank you that you've allowed us to see seconds, minutes, and hours pass. Now we've reached a new hour. We've reached a new moment. We've reached a new day. We've reached a new beginning. God, help us to not look back, but to only look forward. Help us to not look to the left nor to the right, but to look straight. God, help us to keep our eyes stayed and fixed upon you. Lord, we pray that we would build your kingdom, not our own. And we pray, oh God, that we would have bigger hearts than we desire to have big pockets. 
Lord, we pray, oh God, that we would be ethical, moral leaders. God, we pray, oh God, that we would move in integrity, oh God, that we would make decisions with other people in mind, not ourselves. God, we pray that we would impact your world because this world is not ours. No, it's yours for your kingdom to come. So, God, we thank you. We speak life over this class. We speak life over this generation. And we declare and decree now that we will be leaders. We will invest into your people. And we will change this world forever. It's in your precious son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Welcome to the 2014 Senior Day Crown Forum. It is with great honor and privilege to stand before you as we reflect on our undergraduate journey. Former President Benjamin Elijah Mays said that every man and every woman is born into the world to do something unique and something distinctive. And if he or she does not do it, it will never be done. I am reassured day by day that we are more than capable to do things beyond our wildest dreams and to fulfill our mission and purpose as Morehouse men. When I think of our class, I think of great leaders in all disciplines, from all walks of life, from different countries, cities, and communities. I think of leaders who will reach and define the world as Morehouse men. Leaders like Aaron Francis, a political science major who overcame the complexity of law school admissions, gaining acceptance into Harvard Law School, and could very well be the next Supreme Court Justice. or Taku Machiori, an accounting major from Zimbabwe who saw fit to start an organization that empowers young Africans from his native country to succeed and thrive just as he will. <laughs> or Gates scholar Corey Hardiman, who despite his father being incarcerated has sacrificed his time and deeds to revive the troubling neighborhoods of Chicago. These are just a few examples of how our class has thrived in academia, global leadership, and service to mankind. We are a league of extraordinary gentlemen that will change and serve a world that is desperate for civil equality, economic empowerment, and spiritual recovery. This will be the mark that the class will make. The class of 2014. The promising, historic, soon to be graduates of 2014. The next doctors, lawyers, politicians, Preachers, activists, artists, businessmen, and most importantly, leaders in our community. And with all the perplexities of life we will experience in our postgraduate endeavors, we can never forget how much was sacrificed for us. To whom much is given, much is expected. It is expected that we give to our institution, we must, we must give back to see our school grow and thrive and manifest to the Morehouse College we all dream about. Thank you.
Trains are coming. Let me tell you about the trains are coming. Let me tell you about the trains are coming. Train, trains are coming. Let me tell you about the trains are coming. Trains, trains are coming. Let me tell you about the trains are coming. Trains, trains are coming. The gospel train are coming, it's coming like a thief in the night. Will you be ready? Will you be ready when that great day comes? Day comes. There's a gospel train are coming, it's coming like a thief in the night. Will you be ready? Will you be ready when that great day comes? Day comes. Present, present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Yes, O oh God, holy, you must be righteous. Yes, O oh God, righteous. Come in, come in. Trains are coming, trains are coming. Coming, coming. Yes, it's coming. Coming, coming. Yes. Good morning, gentlemen. It is my privilege and indeed my honor today to recognize those students who have achieved outstanding recognition within the Division of Business and Economics. So as I call these students, I'd ask that they please come to the stage. In finance, Mr. Austin Broussard. In accounting, Mr. Thavon Davis. In marketing, Mr. Colby Kirkland. In management, Mr. Ocaranola Bamboche. And in economics, Mr. Donald Penn. Again, let's give these gentlemen a round of applause for excellent work. Good morning. Good morning. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, to receive their awards, the top ranking seniors of the Division of Humanities and Social Sciences. And as my 
as our division department chairs and program directors prepare to give these awards, I will call the names. And I'm going to call the names of the division chairs and program directors first so they can come on up, and then as the students come up, they can present the awards. For African American Studies, we have Dr. Samuel Livingston. For the Department of English, we have Dr. Consuela Bennett. For the Department of Kinesiology, Sports Studies, and Physical Education, we have Dr. Claude Hutto. The History Department, we have Dr. Dr. Frederick Knight. For the Department of Modern Languages, uh, we have Dr. Michael Dillon. The Department of Music, Dr. Yuzi Brown. For the Department of Philosophy and Religion, we have Dr. Aaron Parker representing the department. For the Department of Polit Political Science, we have Dr. Ebenezer Aka. The Department of Sociology, Dr. Michael Hodge. For the Urban Studies Program and the International Studies Program, Dr. Aka will present the awards as well. For African American Studies, the top ranking senior for that program, Mr. Antoine Simpkin. <laughs> the Department of English, Mr. Jordan Jones. The Department of Kinesiology, Sports Studies, and Physical Education, Mr. Jericho Johnson. For the Department of History, Mr. Charles Poindexter. For the Department of Modern Foreign Languages, Spanish, Mr. Evan Turnage. For the Department of Music, Mr. Evan Farley. For the Philosophy and Religion Department, for philosophy, rather, we have Mr. Andrew Kimball. And also for philosophy, we have Mr. Aaron Francis. For religion, we have Mr. Winford Rice. For political science, Mr. Cordy Ennis. Sociology, Mr. Julian Wyatt. For the Urban Studies Program, Mr. Trayvon Jackson. And for the International Studies Program, Mr. Jonathan Hun Brodnax. Congratulations, gentlemen.
Good morning. I'm very pleased to recognize the top-ranking seniors in the Division of Science and Mathematics today. Uh, please come forward when I call your name. Mr. Jonathan Cooks in biology. Mr. Anthony Screws in chemistry. Mr. Francisco Nunez in computer science. Mr. Octavius Talbot in mathematics. Uh, Mr. Brennan Turnipseed is a student, top-ranking student in the dual degree engineering program, but he's at the engineering school, so he, he's not with us today. <clears throat> Mr. Evan Turnage in physics. And Mr. Curtis Hooks in psychology. I see all I have 
needed thy hands have provided great is thy faithfulness Lord I to me me Greetings to our president, Dr. John Silvanus Wilson. It's a pleasure to be amongst you all here, the class of 2014. Last week, the arrangement of gravity and the motions of the earth and the moon in the solar system provided a backdrop of a canvas of cosmic pandemonium. The blood moon crossed the earth's surface on Tuesday as it took a hue from 2 a.m. to 4 o'clock in the morning. Observers gazed up to the sky, attempting to get a glimpse of this rare sighting. Your ability to see this peculiar, picturesque moment depended on the condition where you were standing. Some across the world gathered in parks or stayed at home, gazing in the sky, catching this rare glimpse. While some parts of the world witnessed rain showers and clouds that prohibited their clear view. Millions watched the brilliance and beauty of the moon, Dr. Parker, as it took on this maroonish hue. During the eclipse, as it passed through the Earth's shadow, which allowed for the maroon light from the planet sunrise and sunset to shine through it, even in the rain. Even in the rain and behind the clouds, the maroon moon was still majestic in the midnight sky. With so many rain clouds in our community, with children of color who are lost in the education system but found as a statistic, rain clouds are flowing. Rain clouds represent grandmothers who cannot access the right to vote because they do not have a voter ID card. Rain clouds, rain clouds that stand for women who are being trafficked through the streets of our inner cities. Rain clouds that reflect children who go to school with book bags and return in body bags, rain clouds. But, but I came to, to ask the class of 2014, who is going to stand around at midnight when, when the rain still falls? Who, who's going to stand around and hang out in the midnight sky when, when rain falls in our lives and when rain falls in our communities? Are, are you going to be just another moon that fades away in the phases of the midnight sky? Are you going to be just focused on mergers and acquisitions that you forget about mentoring? Or you going to be another moon that just wants to be another lawyer that takes cases instead of fighting against the laws that systematically oppress our people? Or you're going to be just another moon. Yes, well, Dr. Wilson, Dr. Wilson, the men of the class of 2014 are not just another moon. Yeah. We are essentially the divine emanations of the majesty in the maroon moon. And, and as I leave you, Morehouse College, as we go out through these solemn halls and walk through these gates, if I never get a chance to stand in King Chapel, and if I never get a chance to walk on Brown Street, and if I never get a chance to pull an all-nighter in Douglas or eat in the cafeteria, if I never get a chance to sing the school hymn with you, I came to tell you this morning, we are the lights in the midnight sky. We are what we've been waiting for. We are the transformative agents of peace. We are powerful beyond measure. We are voices for the downtrodden. We are majestic. We, we are majestic. We are more, 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 we are maroon moons. We are Morehouse moons. We are men that hang in the midnight sky. And I came to tell you today, are there any maroon moons in the building that can hang out in midnight, that can hang out when troubles arise? We are the maroon moon. Good morning, my brothers. My name is Seth Lyndon Brown, and it's a privilege and a pleasure to be here on this morning with you graduating class of 2014. I'm told that spirituality has to do with the interconnectedness of all things. Man and woman, your education and your values, your friendships and your character, the haves and the haves-nots, and yes, even your struggles and your successes. 
the aforesaid work in concept, concert to make us aware of our individual purposes, which ultimately enables us to understand the human experience. One of the dimensions of our particular experience, seniors, is the last four tedious, unique, and serendipitous years that we have spent at this institution. Our acceptance to this college was an invitation from Mother Morehouse herself for us to come and acquire the spiritual tools that are necessary to transform first ourselves and then the world at large. The mark of a Morehouse man is this, that through his spirituality, he is able to be the architect of the outcomes of his experiences because he has an acute awareness and a thorough understanding of God, the world, and himself. And because of this fact, accordingly, for some of us here today, in a few weeks, Brown Street will become Wall Street. And for others, what were occasional visits to the Davison House will become regular invitations to the White House. And yet, even for others, what were only once short-lived uh, study abroad trips will become long-lasting, frequent travels of diplomatic uh, influence to foreign countries that will, re that will return to us long-lasting relationships and respect. And yet, in order to reach these heights, one must cast away negative views of life that they hold and, and irrelevant opinions of people as old clothes that don't fit anymore. All are not born into this world with great riches or with notoriety or influence. But we are all born with spirituality. We must always bear in mind that the spiritual life is not about what we have, but about who we have. That's the secret to interconnectedness. And on that great and glorious day, when we will earn the highly coveted and regarded designation of Morehouse Man, that day when we will be able to claim the crown that has hovered over our heads for four long and transformative years. Somebody say that day. That day when we turn our tassels and simultaneously turn to a new chapter in our existence. That day when we will serve as candles to this dark and dismal world. Remember that no matter where this life takes you and no matter what you do in it. Remember that a candle cannot burn without fire, and neither can a man live without his spirituality. Whew. Let's give a hand clap to Seth and Stephen one more time. It has been beyond a pleasure to be here at Morehouse College and in the class of 2014. To see the leaders that went before me to speak, I was all inspired to say that we are about to change this thing called America. A lot of times, a lot of people sit around and they talk about a Morehouse man as an uppity Negro or one that forget about where he come from. But today I stand here as a hope dealer a dealer that look at the South Side community in which I come from and say, oh, hope is on the way. When I arrived at Morehouse College, I walked on this campus and I was inspired to see the statue of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I couldn't believe that I made it from the hood to Morehouse. I sat outside of the King Chapel and I said, God, what are you trying to tell me? I want to become a corporate attorney I want to live in a big house. I want to drive the best car there is to offer. But God said, son, when I call forth a Morehouse man, I don't call forth one that is self-centered, but I call forth one that is selfless. When you drive down the street and you see a struggling mother, a Morehouse man stops his beings, get out his car, take off his soup jacket, and help the mother along the way. Let's, let's change the way a Morehouse man is viewed. Let's stop with the self-centeredness and realize that we are a selfless man that is here on a journey to uplift another brother. When I think about my title today, 
on what I'm speaking about, a social conscience. I think about what happened when I left Roseland and came to Morehouse. What if I would have said I'm at Morehouse, I made it from the hood, and now I'm at the top, I have arrived to my destination because I'm no longer ducking and dodging the bullets that I once did going to high school. But the Lord said no. Every semester as a student in the class of 2014, I returned to the trenches in which I come from. And I told the young men in the class of 2014 that will graduate this year from Corliss High School, I said, because I've made it to Morehouse, another one will follow. Well, I am here today to inform the class of 2014. Not only as I transition out, my mentee will transition in as a Gates Millennium Scholar, full ride at Morehouse College. That is a Morehouse man with a social conscience. We cannot forget where we come from. There is a village on fire, and it's in need of a hope dealer ready to transition that place into a better place. As a child, I envisioned a community, one that will one day be livable, one that will one day be a place where a kid can go to the park and play. And before I tell anyone else, I want to tell my class that after Morehouse College, Corey Antonio Hardiman will return to the Roseland community, place his name on a ballot for city council, and say that this Morehouse man did not lose his place, but he regained something at Morehouse College that would now transcend Roseland into the next Beverly Hills. We have to change the things that seem unchangeable. We have to be the hope to the hopeless. And the dealer of hope in a community where dope dealers are taking over. No more, no more. No more dope dealers, but more hope dealers. How can we say that we want our community to change, but we pick up our degree and we head the opposite way? How can we say that we want more young black men at Morehouse doing things that the world say they cannot, but we pick up our degrees and head another way? I charge my class to pick up your degree and pick up a young person and say that you too will follow in the footsteps but your footsteps should be bigger than mine. And when I say your footsteps should be bigger than mine, you don't aspire to be like me. You aspire to be better than me. Before I take my seat, men of the class of 2014, one thing I want you to always remember that we must inspire, aspire to inspire before we expire. Go out. Change the world and don't let it change you. Thank you. My name is Jonathan A. Hunt Broadnex, a senior international studies major from Sacramento, California. Not one, but two felonies at the age of 13 staring at my mama through a jail cell. I was taught to be the man of my house at the age of six, the eldest of three boys. The judge labeled me a menace to society. My teachers told me that I would never amount to anything and I would definitely never set foot on a college campus, but oh, thank God for spine. I have been pursuing this undergraduate degree for 10 years. Many of you are still in middle school. A single black father at community college, unemployed. I went days without eating, days without sleeping, survived homelessness, survived helplessness, crying myself to sleep for the fear of failure, never told that I would never make it to Morehouse College, and when I made it here that I would never make it to my senior year, oh, but thank God for spine. Sleeping on a bench under the statue of Dr. Martin Luther King just six months ago at the beginning of my senior year, homeless again, owing the institution $10,000, but negative $3,000 to my name. I was told that I may graduate from Morehouse College, but I wouldn't, be a pat, I wouldn't be a part of the illustrious class of 2014. Oh, but thank God for spine. Now here I am, delivering a speech to the college I was never supposed to attend. Weeks before graduation, I was never supposed to uh, achieve. 
I want to let you know that the hoodlum is here about to graduate with honors. The hoodlum. Graduate school paid for with a degree uh, prepared in a, in, a, in a career waiting for me after my master's. Oh, thank God for spine. Brothers, what is spine? Spine is that backbone. It's that thing in your back that allows you to stand tall, even though it seems like the earth is designed to pull you towards the ground. Spine is that thing that allows you to weather the weight of the world on your shoulders, no matter how heavy it gets. Spine is that thing that provides you with strength so you can fight towards a victory, no matter how vicious your hypothetical opponent. Understand that Morehouse College was built on the spine of individuals with tremendous, with tremendous faith and tremendous boldness. There was a reason why you were forbidden from setting foot on Century Campus. It's because individuals with tremendous spine died on this campus, and you have to earn the right to stand on that grass and to stand on their shoulders. You have to earn that. It took spine. There's a reason why we fold our arms when we sing the Morehouse M. It took spine of individuals who stood outside of Morehouse College and interlocked their arms and protected it from the Ku Klux Klan as they came up. They stared death in the eyes and said, not today. We will not be moved. Morehouse will live another day. It took spine. Understand that President Thurman said that Morehouse College holds a crown over the heads of her students and challenges them to grow tall enough to wear it. How many of you know you can't grow without spine? And to grow is to go from one, uh, to go from one position to another position through a process of exertion. What that means is that you don't just walk into Morehouse and get the mystique. You don't just walk into Morehouse and get the crown. You have to earn it. Just because you go here does not mean that you grow here. And just because you are known here does not mean that you belong here. The mystique is that you have to take responsibility for your education. Mommy and daddy gave you to the house, and it's up to you to develop a spine. Ask the men in front of you how many times they were told no. How many times they hit a brick wall? How many times they had to make sacrifices? How many times they failed? How many days they went without eating? How many days they went without sleeping? How many times they had to pray through the pain? Brothers, it takes spine to sit in these seats. To get to these seats, you need to have a certain level of, of faith, of strength, of resilience, and of mystique. Develop a spine, brothers, and oh, what a day it will be when they call your name. A day when you have earned the right to stand on that grass and stand atop the shoulders of the individuals who died so you could be in this position. Oh, what a day it will be when they call your name. When Benjamin Elijah Mays is staring at the back of your polished crown, whispering in your ear, well done, my son. Now step forth into your destiny. Oh, what a day it will be when they call your name. When your family is standing in the crowd, mothers are crying and fathers are standing taller than Sale Hall because they understand how difficult it was for you to get to this day or where the day it will be when they call your name. But understand, on behalf of the class of 2014, it is my obligation to let you all know that you may never hear your name called if you do not develop a spine. Understand that at Morehouse College, it is not just your mind, but your spine that will propel you to success. Thank you. Let's give these guys another round of applause. Um, so now uh, it's the process of passing down the torch from one uh, senior class president to uh, the junior class president, sophomore, and freshman class president. And uh, if I could get the, uh, them to come forward. So Mr. Justin Jones. And also is the sophomore class president uh, present? Mr. Alexander Ban, 
and also the sophomore class president, or oh, excuse me, junior class president. Thank you for your service, and thank you for your commitment and dedication. Thank you. We will now have closing remarks by our president, Dr. John Silvanus Wilson. Dr. Wilson, please. Yeah. Senator, Senator, come on. Come on. Sorry. Uh, please be seated. I, I, won't, I won't be long. I want to say congratulations uh, to the class of 2014. Congratulations. All right? Um, I admire those who stood up here to represent you. I didn't know there was so much Pentecostalism in the class. <laughs> all right. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, because you are the class of 2014, uh, I want to let you know we have a special connection. Uh, since I am the class of 1979, that puts us on the same reunion cycle. So that means every reunion, you're going to see some of my classmates, and I'm going to hope to see as many of you as possible. Being here today, reminded me of my own senior day uh, right, in this, right in this chapel. And we sat together like you sit together, and we had no idea what was going to happen. But I will tell you now, uh, and you can write this down, there are going to be some of you um, in your class that you will never see again. Right? This is a very, very special moment. And I really strongly urge you, now and for the next three or four weeks until that day, that you cherish each other's presence. There's some guys that I have not seen since this day, since the graduation day, especially senior day. Um, one in particular. And Guy Dixon, and Guy was one of the rock stars in my class. His dad was a famous movie star. Some of, some of you from my generation will remember this only black guy on television for years. It's a program called Hogan's Heroes, and that was Ivan Dixon. Ivan Dixon, his son, and Guy. No, I, right, right, right. Back in the day now, back in the day. All right, all right. And Guy uh, was a rock star at Morehouse just like we had so many in my class, and he did quite well. And, you know, in Harvard Business School, they usually ask you to work a couple years and then come to Harvard Business School, but, and God got in right away. He was, uh, he was a bad brother. And um, his second year in Harvard Business School, he uh, found out he had leukemia. And, and Guy was gone by the time of our fifth reunion. But his dad came, and he felt as if we were his sons now. There was something about the love that Guy had for his class, and the love we had for each other, that sustained not just us, but others. I strongly urge you to feel that love. Because there's some guys sitting here now who you're never going to see again because they're going to make their way through life on a different path. I need you to understand that, and I need you to cherish the next few weeks because that's where the love really comes forward. Now, I've been in touch with some of the guys in my class, and now that I'm president, this is the first reunion year since i become president, so we're, there's a human effort to get as many back as possible so that we can, in some way, relive some of this. It is an honor to be able to pick up the phone and call a classmate who's Secretary of Homeland Security and ask him to be 
your graduation speaker. So we're going from Barack Obama to Secretary Jay Johnson. That's not so bad, I must say. And the fact that Jay is a classmate of mine, graduate of Morehouse College, is extra, is extra special. Some of your classmates will make it to the heights like that. Some will not. Final thing I'll say is one of the dynamics that I understood was that some guys, they're going to hesitate to come back because they're going to feel that, well, I'm not as successful as these other guys, and so I don't want to be around because I'm going to be a little embarrassed because I'm not doing as much. I'm just uh, one guy said, I'm just a teacher. I said, just a teacher? Man, you're doing the most special thing anybody, any of us could do. You're creating our future. Please, class of 2014, don't go there. This brotherhood is very special. It's very strong. And it doesn't matter what you're doing in five years or 10 years. I want you to come back here, and I want you to feel this embrace again. If you can't do it for yourself, then do it for your brothers who will look forward to seeing you. I'll see you in a couple weeks at graduation, all right? It's going to be a special day, and I promise I'm going to work hard, my hardest, my team and I, to do what I said in that inaugural address, and that is to make this the world of our dreams. You have my commitment, my full energy, that Morehouse is going to get better and better and better until we are the world of our dreams. Now, let's sing this very special hymn. Let's stand. Uh, Dean Booker in the chapel. Hold on one second. Uh, Mark, before we leave, I want you to. This, your leader, has gone overboard. And I've been concerned about him because he's stressed, like many of us, in these last days, but he has worked tirelessly for your class. So, your class has given you this honor, this award, for the fine work that you've done for your class. And to a good man, there's always a backup man. And Corey has been there when Ryan was doing other things for the class, but Corey was always there at 2 in the morning calling him, texting him, put, sending word out to you all. Now, Corey, you told me your dreams were to be a councilman in Chicago. No, Dr. King, uh, Dr. Dr. May says stretch your dreams. We expect you to be the mayor. And with the mayor, you need to have a Morehouse pen and a card holder. So congratulations, Dave. Great job. Okay. All right. Good point.